Hi everyone. We are certainly living in unreal times. On the news, you see pictures of cities all over the world and their streets are empty. No traffic, no people. Now, during this week, a friend of ours from the UK sent us a WhatsApp of one of my favorite songs where it talks about empty streets. And it wasn't long after I'd received this video of the song that Helen received the same song but from different sources and different singers. And during the week, Hugo Lottachem went and quoted this song on his Facebook page. And the song is, The King is Coming. And these are the words of a king is coming. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the streets. All the builders, tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors. In the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate. And the song ends with these words, The King is coming, the King is coming for me. He's coming for you and for me. And this encouraged me to do a little bit of a study on the second coming of Christ. And I want to quote to you from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5. But the interesting part is, as Paul is telling us about the second coming, about the fact that the king is coming, he goes to the future, tells us what's going to happen, and then he comes back to the present. Then he goes back to the future, then he comes back to the present. And so Paul is encouraging us by taking us to the future and then telling us what to do in the present. In the future, the first thing that Paul tells us about is that for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And then it tells us that we will rise up to meet him in the air. And finally it says, so we will be with the Lord forever. So we will be with the Lord forever. That's the future. The Lord is coming. We're going to meet him in there and we're going to be with the Lord forever. But from that, Paul tells us in the present what we must do. He says, therefore, encourage each other with these words. Therefore, encourage each other with these words now. Encourage each other now with the words that Jesus is coming. Then we go back to the future where Paul tells us that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. That means unannounced, suddenly, unexpectedly. And the result of that is <clears throat> he tells us that he died for us so that it's reminding us what it's all about in the beginning. He died for us. But why did he die for us? He died for us so that we may live together with him. So that we may live together with him. That's the future. And he comes back to the present. Again, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you were doing. So the big Tory story of the second coming is that it's in the future and we can look forward to it and then we're going to be with the Lord and we're going to be with the Lord forever. We're going to be with him forever. That is to encourage us now in the present. And what must we do with those words? What must we do with the fact that Jesus is coming? Well, we must realize there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And at this moment, we need to encourage each other.
We need to encourage each other and build each other up. Now, one of the things that I'm finding is that it can become so easily discouraging being locked up, being locked down. We can become so depressed. Yes, we are better off than a lot of other people. And yet somehow, because we can't go to the beach, because we can't go and surf, because we can't go and do park run, because we can't go out of our houses, we can get so easily depressed. And that's why we need each other and we need to be encouraging one another. I find these devotionals very encouraging. They encourage me because I see old faces, I see new faces, I see people who are continuing to minister for the Lord, I see people who are growing in the Lord. When we were there in the ministry, we saw people who were just joining the church, now we see them ordained, ministering and preaching. And that's encouraging. So these daily devotions are encouraging. But we need to be encouraging each other with the fact that Jesus is coming. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Let's hang in there and just trust in the Lord and encourage each other. Communicate with each other. Have time for each other and be there for each other to build each other up. We've got something wonderful to look forward to. The King is coming and He's coming for me. He's coming for you. He's coming for all of us. God bless you.